Um, Andy Penn, thank you for joining us. Um, telcos around the world have a huge role to play in our collective journey towards net zero. On the one hand, the connectivity that you bring can be part of the wider solution. Uh, but on the other hand, telcos are a big consumer of power. So you have your own decarbonization journeys to worry about as well. So it's really great to be able to explore these, these issues with you. Um, so first question, Andy, um, I've heard you express the view that climate change is the defining issue for the 2020s. Can you tell me more about your view, uh, the role that Telstra is playing in decarbonizing Australia, and in particular, how you are leading Australian corporates uh, into procuring green power purchase agreements? Yeah, no, sure, Daniel, and thanks very much for the opportunity to join you. Uh, and you're right, that was my comment at the beginning of um, this year. It was before, actually, I fully understood the, uh, the profound impact of, of COVID. But notwithstanding that, I, I do stand by the comment because we will get through this current pandemic and there will be solutions moving forward. But I'm not as confident and it's not as clear that there will be solutions in relation to the climate change the climate challenge that we all face if we don't step into it and take further action. And that's really what, I guess, sat behind our announcements earlier this year, really to be much bolder in relation to our commitments on climate. Because I think, you know, candidly, the biggest risk on climate is believing it's somebody else's problem to solve. And as you said, telcos can play a role in helping that solution, but they also need to be cognizant that they are one of the biggest users of um, electricity and therefore we have a big carbon pr footprint, something in the order for us about 1.2 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent per annum that we produce as a consequence of the amount of electricity that we use. And the thing that drives the electricity use is essentially the ongoing need to create sort of capacity for the ever increasing volumes of data which sort of sit behind the digital economy, which brings you back to that virtuous circle, which is the thing that can play a role in, in also helping other industries reduce um, carbon. So we set out three clear, clear targets to be carbon neutral by the end of this calendar year, which we've already actually achieved. Secondly, to produce renewable energy equivalent to our total energy consumption by 2025, and we're already at about 30%. And then thirdly, to reduce our absolute um, output of carbon emissions by 50% by 2030. So uh, they're the targets we set ourselves, a big increase on what we've been previously doing, but in really in response to that recognition that I truly believe it is going to be the defining challenge of the 2020s. Yeah, yeah, they're big, they're big commitments. are great to see Telstra stepping up like that. Um, more broadly, um, in terms of the telecommunications industry and telcos themselves, um, what sort of role do you see telecommunications playing in tackling uh, climate and, and energy challenges? Well, I think, you know, and it, it's, uh, it's interesting, obviously, in Australia, the Prime Minister here announced last November, even before COVID, that his aspiration was for Australia to be a top five leading digital economy in the world by 2030. And of course, what we sometimes forget is actually the digital economy, the internet and the telecommunications network we're all inextricably linked because it is actually the telecommunication network that enables the internet, which enables the digital economy. So therefore, telecommunications is crucial in that journey. And of course, as we saw through COVID, uh, you know, a very, very significant adoption of uh, e-commerce and of working online and studying online. And so if you just think about even that and the impact it's had on the reduction in commuting and air travel, um, you can see how a move or an accelerated move to a digital economy can also actually help uh, many, many businesses reduce their carbon footprint by the way in which they change their operations. Um, another example would be uh, the Internet of Things, where we can enable uh, the physical world to become digitised to be operated more efficiently. Give, I'll give you a really simple example. You can put sensors in garbage bins these days to determine whether they're full and need emptying or not and significantly improve the efficiency of the uh, waste collection and waste management system you know and all of these things clearly can have profound impacts uh on yeah, huge, um, huge the current impact. industries in fact the gsma which is the global industry body uh, has done some analysis that sort of says 
there's a one for 10 productivity uh, or carbon efficiency impact through telecommunications. So for every um, one in, uh, sort of one million tons that we might produce by supporting a telecommunications network, will actually reduce 10 million tons elsewhere in the economy. Uh, but that doesn't stop us from wanting to reduce our 1 million tons as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think the um, the multiplier effect is, um, is is something good to call out and doesn't surprise me at all when you say it like that. Um, so, you, Andy, you, you listed some of the bold climate change ambitions for Telstra just a bit earlier on. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and also Telstra's ambition to lead by example and also what you're personally doing as a, as a leader yeah sure well i think um you know as i mentioned there's sort of really three goals so the first thing for us was to become carbon neutral this year and we have achieved that uh, we've been working with climate active um, to make sure that uh, in the first instance we're obviously acquiring carbon credits to ensure that we achieve that as well as making sure that we reduce our own carbon emissions at the same time. Uh, and not all carbon credits are obviously equal. So we've done an enormous amount of due diligence into the projects which sit behind our carbon credits to make sure that they are truly having an impact on the climate. And a really interesting one that we're investing in is um, uh, Savannah Burning. So this uh, is a community out, um, sorry, a, a, a team from a community outside of Arakun in the northern territory um, where they're doing a lot of burn off um, of um, savanna grasses and the way in which that can be done can actually accelerate regrowth which then uh, is carbon offsetting which is so just being really thoughtful about the sort of projects you're investing in the second thing that we're doing to hit that midterm target is that of course 95 percent of our emissions come from our use of electricity and of course, the majority of our electricity obviously comes from the grid. Now, we as a telco can't do anything to change where the source of power from the grid or within the grid comes from, whether it's fossil fuel or renewable, uh, prima facie. So we, by definition, we have to take what's on offer. But the way in which we're influencing that is that we're investing in renewable energy projects, such as wind farm, such as solar, that will ultimately increase the overall mix of power supply that's available in the country, which will over time actually reduce the reliance of the grid on fossil fuel based energy sources and more on renewable. And so our commitment is to basically be investing in and supporting energy production, at least equivalent to 100% of our energy consumption by 2025. And as I mentioned, we're already at 30% of that through those um, projects and we're looking at others that we can support as well. Yeah, fantastic. And thanks for sharing. And Andy Penn, um, thank you for uh, making your time available to uh, join our Green Energy Conference this year. Um, and, um, you know, good luck on leading Telstra and, you know, enabling Australia also on um, the respective paths to, to net zero. Thanks very much, Daniel. And I, and I do think it, it, it is a team sport. Everybody needs to to play a role and you you did ask me what i'm doing personally and so i measure my own personal carbon footprint there's lots of tools out there for us to be able to do that and it's partly helpful in terms of educating me and what i need to do but but actually it's about uh, embracing it and recognizing it. it's something that we can all make a difference on so thank you yeah you're absolutely right we all play our role <laughs>